and then spotlight you. It's your floor. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm so honored to be here. Um, I love being in LEAP. There are so many amazing ladies. In fact, I can't wait to come to November, the uh, one day. So in Phoenix, I will be there from California, you guys. So today we are here to talk about... <clears throat> Let me find my PowerPoint. I do want PowerPoint because I knew that this is more of a training, but I really love interaction. So any of you who are live or live online watching, please, please, please comment or do anything. Uh, ask any questions. Colleen will uh, let me know if there's anything. Um, and don't be afraid to reach out to me after if you have questions. You can reach me on Facebook is the best way or my email or my website because I want to be a resource for you. Okay. And Colleen and I run the <clears throat> Leap Mastermind. It's the incubator. Um, and you'll have to tell them when that is. The first Tuesday. What is that? It is the second Tuesday of every month. Okay. At noon. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if you're a member, you can come time. to that. And we mastermind the heck out of anything you got going on. So if you want to bring some of your questions to that mastermind, that's what you want to do. And then her and I can help you with those. So that's, that's a great one, Lisa, for you to make sure you're signed up for. Yeah. And this is a good time because you can ask as many questions as you want based on, you know, who's got questions in the room and you can also offer advice. So yeah, great. Hmm. Yes. It's on my calendar. Thank you. Perfect. So I know, uh, let's see. I know, Colleen, you're dropping some links in there. So I'll just put these other links. And then I do have a special offer at the end. I will put if anybody has uh, wants to take a next step. OK, but um, today we're talking about next level efficiency with the use of all the right technology. Maybe that's why they're scared. They don't want to change their tech. They don't want to learn what they need to learn. I don't know. But that's what we're talking about today is technology. And so I'm going to start this and thumbs up you can hear see me see the slides yes yeah okay all right so next level efficiency i am probably one of the most efficient people people always say how do you do all this stuff because i am so freaking efficient and organized with my technology it's it's scary okay um and I, there's more to do okay i will tell you that i have so much more to do so, but why am I so efficient? Because I want a life, okay? And I, I want a life. Efficient technology and efficiency and organization uh, will streamline your business so that you can reach more people, make more money, and have a life. But also, more than just the freedom that we want and the lifestyle that we want, you have to get this stuff in place ASAP because what if something happens to you or a loved one? What if, right? And so we were just talking about our husbands. So like, thank God we found uh, the, the people that we're with today, myself included. I had a husband who wasn't very supportive. The second husband I found, Jason, I found him in 2012, right? We were gung-ho. We were going to get married in 2014. He proposed. And three weeks later, he was diagnosed with throat cancer. Okay. And so we had to postpone our wedding a year, but worst of all is we had to have help him through chemotherapy treatments and radiation. And he was uh, even sent to an emergency one time on his last day of chemo uh, because of a blood clot. I thought like he could, he could have almost died. He could have almost died many times. And so I wanted to spend as much time with him as possible during that year. And of course, it made me wake up to, oh, we better spend, you know, let's prioritize, reprioritize things. But thank God, I already had a lot of systems in place. I already had a lot of automated marketing. I already had a couple of virtual assistants who could help me do stuff. So I could actually take off half the day and go help him with uh, and go down to the hospital with him every single day he had chemo every single day. Okay for like eight weeks. So if I didn't have all the systems and structures set up, think about if you had to leave your job right now or leave your business right now for eight weeks and you couldn't do too much because if someone else had an illness or maybe you did, that was unexpected. They're always unexpected, right? Would you make any money during that time? I didn't lose any money. I didn't lose any clients. I didn't lose anything. It all, I didn't make a whole lot extra, okay? But I was thankful for what I already had set up. So I just 
this is so important. And so please, like you've got to make strides in your automation, your technology, your websites and your systems all the time, all the time. Today, I've been making, I make updates on my websites. I have four different, three, three different websites. I make updates on them almost every day almost every day myself. Plus, I'm also delegating to my team. Hey, I don't have time to fix this. Can you go fix this, right? And can you go change this? Can you go change that? Can you, oh, the opt-in's not working. Something's wrong with the page. Like they're fixing things probably almost every day because technology does go awry. So you have to stay on top of it. In fact, I was just talking with a client right before this call. <clears throat> we had a 90 minute deep dive initial call. The one that you guys can have at the end of this call, actually, it was 90 minutes. Um, 350 bucks is a super, super good deal, you guys. And we walked through and I found all kinds of errors in her website that she didn't know were there because she didn't look, she didn't test it. She doesn't think about it. And she's wondering why she's not making any money. Well, that's one reason because things are broken. When you send people to your website and it's broken or there's not the right things to get people to a next step or get people to buy or click or sign up or whatever, you have a broken system. You have a broken marketing and sales system. You cannot have a broken system. You cannot go marketing more with a website that's not going to convert people either. You cannot market more if you're not following up with people. If she wasn't sending any emails to her list, granted her list was very small, 91 people on her list, okay? But she wasn't sending any emails. She could probably send a weekly email and it make at least $400 easily with what she's selling. Okay. Easily with any, that's just simple with 91 people on your list for what she's selling. Okay. So if we don't do the basics, please don't go do the advanced things until you have the basics down in your business, because the advanced things are not going to bring you in a lot more business and advanced. I mean, like, you know, some people are like, Oh, I'm going to start a podcast. Well, your website doesn't even have a free opt-in on it. Right. So like, let's put things in order of importance on what really needs to happen. Now, some people who are more advanced, great. There's always a next level in your technology and your systems, though, always. And you might want to be technical with, with the Internet and the way the websites are today. You're going to want to probably be updating your website almost every two years. New website, new layout, new theme, new opt ins almost every two years. I don't it's almost it doesn't matter what you sell. But if you're not keeping up with technology, then you're behind and you look old with the technology, okay? So this is my like practical, tactical warning, like please pay attention to this. So I say it right up front for those people who tune in right away and go, Shit. you know, and when we were done with our call, this last gal, she's like, she, I mean, she was very quiet at the end of the call because she probably had a list of like 752 things that she wanted to do. And luckily we recorded it all, right? Um, and I'm like, okay, I know I can tell you're overwhelmed. And she's like, yes. And I said, this is what you do. You listen back to this recording once a week and you just pull off two things that you can do that week. Okay. Until you get it all done. It might take you six months to get it all done. Maybe less if you work hard. Right. But it's so critical to getting the things done. So I'm just saying like, there's a gazillion things we have to learn and you don't have to be an expert at everything. You can have other people doing your stuff. So we'll talk about delegating too. So if you're here or you're watching the recording, you could be overwhelmed. You could want more consistent cash flow, right? Because the roller coaster of cash flow really sucks, right? One month it's great, one month it sucks. <laughs> and you're like, ah, freaking out. Confused about marketing perhaps or technology or where to start, great. We're gonna talk about that. Hopefully you want a smooth running money-making business machine. That's what I love to point out and make sure people have, right? If you want a consistent money-making business, doing what you love, thanks to Lisa who just quit her job, yeehaw, now you can focus full-time on what you love to do, which is awesome. So get the right stuff in place from the start, please, right? Listen to the right people and not the bright, shiny objects. I'm the practical, tactical, so is Colleen, um, do this, do this, do this, do this. I mean, you could, all the things we're talking about today, I mean, well, you need to talk about marketing and sales. Anyways, it's it's the practical tactical, right? So, and while impacting more people, of course, we want all this. So I'm here to show you how to make more money by doing more technology systems and automation. You will make more money, okay? You can change your life. 
You don't have to wait. If you don't know how much money you need to make, you need to figure out your goals. I have a goal sheet for that. I can give it to you if you're interested later. Um, you got to want more. Okay. So a lot of times people will say, well, I only need to make a couple thousand dollars a month, or I only need $10,000 a month, but then they don't have enough money to take a vacation. They don't have enough money to travel across the country to go to a workshop. They don't have enough money to put their kid through college. They don't have enough money to pay for a high-end program that they really want. They don't have enough money to take a certification program. They don't have enough money to uh, take three months off. My friend Jackie just took nine weeks off and went to uh, Europe, right? They don't have enough money to, to get out of their business and go do that. So stop barely surviving in your business, make a goal high enough that can get you what you want. Don't worry about how you're going to get there. We'll, but then we do have to worry about it. But I want you to think bigger, right? So for Lisa, like, I don't know. Um, for Lisa, you want to make a goal like that's big enough, right? You quit your job. So, you know, maybe your goal is 100,000. And reality in one year, not a lot of people do that in one year. You can though, you can, if you're confident enough to charge what you're worth, okay? So, but you have to get motivated about money in order to do some of this techie stuff. Um, I do vision boards to make goals. This is one in 2014, right? Get married and make $250,000. Well, I didn't get married that year, as I said, but um, this was made, yeah. So it's just fun. Today, I'm gonna cover three things. The biggest myths you've been led to believe about others when it comes to embracing technology, the secrets to enjoying a consistent and efficient, smooth running money-making business sooner than later, and simple steps to tweaking your business easily and quickly. We're going to talk about things you can do because it's a masterclass, right? So does technology overwhelm you? I know it did this gal that I was just talking to, right? She was like, oh, I have a website. Okay, great. But that's not enough, right? And how it can help your business. So hopefully you know that it can help your business. Key reasons to embrace it, more efficiency, more productivity. You can communicate with customers consistently. And I was mentioning something, and this is a big tip, is to put a video on almost every page of your website. Why? Because it's a process you're taking people through. Your website is a journey for people. They might click on five or six pages before they leave. Uh, they might opt in for something and then you take them to another page to deliver the thing, but then what, right? Have a video there that talks about the thing you just gave them, but also tells them what to do next. You take them on a journey. Think about the process you want to take people through when they come onto your website and go through the pages. You have to fill it out too to see how it works, right? But video will help them not just see the words on the page. A lot of people won't read your pages, so if they have a video there, especially if it's just a couple minutes of you talking, they might want to see, I wonder what that chick uh, <laughs> Katrina is like. I wonder what Colleen is. And then boom, big energy, right? And you're either going to love it or you're going to be like, oh, energy, right? So, <laughs> and that's how it is. But you're the right people will like, trust, and connect with you faster, which means they're going to be faster to a sale if you have some video on different pages, a lot of different pages, Okay. Communicate, uh, um, deliver content or instruction, again, like I was just saying, with uh, videos perhaps and or more content. A lot of times people don't have enough information on the web pages to make me want to buy or sign up for something. If you have a free thing, just because it's free doesn't mean I'm going to get it. You have to convince me to get it. Okay, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Increase new and repeat sales. You want to keep taking people from your email in and two pages on your website too, right? Do you have a free special do you, or a free offer or a special offer or a sign up today? Or did you have an event page? Do you have a blog they can read, right? Expand your reach to and simplify. So these are all reasons. If you, a lot of times people will say, well, I can't follow up with everybody or, or they don't have their things in an autoresponder or anybody that comes in from referrals, they actually have to send them an email back, right? Hopefully you don't have that problem and you're already automating some of these emails. Now, automation doesn't have to be impersonal. It can be very personal. You can have an email, you can have, or I'm sorry, a video in there. You can have a uh, wording that's more personal, like, hey, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for coming to my website, etc. Okay. So myth number one is you just ne need to focus on one thing in your automation and your systems, right? No, you, you want to focus on social media, your funnels, your autoresponders, videos, 
uh, webinar, speaking, outsourcing, you, you kind of do want to expand your expert status here and get a lot of stuff in place. So it's not just have a funnel and you're going to make a million dollars. Okay, please don't say, please don't think that, right? Oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Um, more of the biggest tech myths. You can use your Facebook or LinkedIn pages as your website. No, don't do that because you don't have control over those. You don't need a website. Well, you certainly can sell in person if you go to a networking event. Someone could buy your thing. Someone could give you a credit card. Of course you can sell. But in the long run, with a bigger reach, it's going to be almost humanly impossible because there will be way too much manual labor chaos. Uh, you don't need a shopping guard. I just invoice clients. Well, invoicing takes year time to do that, right? So we don't want to do that. We want to have a click and buy thing, right? Even we want to be able to create a bunch of options for people in our Stripe or Square or PayPal or wherever and have those links available. Whether you have them on a web page or you pull them up when you're on a conversation, you want to be able to click and take someone's card. You want to be able to take the money today, not send them an invoice or send them a link to pay. That is inefficient. And it is not always a proven way to close the sale either. Um, so we don't want to, you don't need all this invoicing software most of the time for, I don't care what you do, I'm, I can help you find a different way to make it more automated. Um, you don't want to just focus on building your list. Building your list is great, but then if you're not talking to your list with effective things that make them want to open, you want an open rate of somewhere between 25 to 40%. Of course, we always want 100%, but a good open rate is 25 to 40%. That's the, num the percentage of people who are getting your emails who actually open it, right? So if you're getting under 10%, that's low. So that means your subject lines or the things you're sending are not uh, really what they want to hear right? Or you're not enticing them enough. So we have to look at what you're saying as well as what you're doing. Um, you, uh, you, It's easy to build your own website. Please don't build your own website. Not with technology these days. Do not build your own website. I don't care if you try GoDaddy, Wix, Weebly. It doesn't matter. There's limited functionality. You are not a web designer. You're probably not a marketing expert, meaning you don't know how to showcase it in a way that's going to make people want to sign up or want to buy. Do not try to save money on a website. Your website is the most important thing you should invest in in the beginning besides a business coach. Okay, no kidding. Like you do not want to skimp on a website. You want to put money into a website. Trust me, and you want to get it done right and thorough. You want, I mean, most people need 20 plus pages on their website. That's just a beginner website is 20 pages. Why? I don't have time to explain it to you and what you need, but I would in a call because most people just don't see what's missing in all these little pages. I have 250 pages on just my one website alone, much less the other two. Okay. I know, Lynn, I know, right? 250 pages because every free thing has a page and every free thing has a thank you page. Every sales thing has a page. Every sales thing has a thank you page. Every event has a page and a thank you page. I mean, if you just think of those things alone and then the more you create, the more you have, there you go, right? So plus the the about, the coaching, the services, the blog, the contact, the help. I mean, there's so many things that we need. And we don't think about the hidden pages, which is where the magic happens. That's where the automation happens happens is those thank you pages and all the, the back end things. Once you've got people in, that's where all the stuff happens that nobody does enough stuff with. Okay. <sighs> okay. And I don't have to learn to use social media, video, and other technology. My customers won't come from there. And I think we know that's a false and no one reads email anyways. Yes, they do. Um, there's plenty of myths to tell yourself about technology, biggest mistakes. I can't afford it. I can't afford certain software. I can't afford to get a VA. You have to stop saying that, meaning you have to make more money, which means your goal's too low, which means you're probably not charging enough. All the things, excuse me, I know we're talking about technology, but I can't help but go sometimes in some other areas because that's what I do. I'm, it all has to flow together. I want to keep my personal stuff separate. I mean, Stop it, you guys. If you're in business, then everything social should be business oriented. Doesn't mean you're not also putting personal stuff in there, but everything should be about your business. Okay. Um, why should you listen to me? I, hopefully, I already proven that I know what the heck I'm talking about, but here's some proof. Yay, 21 years in business. Um, I know a lot of people. I've done a lot of things. I'm making a lot of money. I've been on a lot of places. I don't need to spend a lot of time on that. 
Um, I have huge value. Uh, Colleen wouldn't have me on, I don't think. If I wasn't like true, you know, help you, whatever it is you need. Um, and I design the life I want around, I design my business around the kind of life I want to live. I want to spend time with these two folks. This is my my husband and my kid. I want to spend time at events and retreats with my clients. And I want to go on vacation. If that's all I did in my life, I'd be super happy. And that's that's pretty much all I do besides com conferences. But I want you to build the business around the kind of life you want to live. Um, I was in a job I hated once. I had an unsupportive marriage. I wasted a lot of time in the wrong places with the wrong people. I've worked way too many hours, you guys. I've had not had balance in my life. I've had health challenges and two total hip replacements. I've had a mom I've had to care give for. I've had all the shit that anybody else could say too, pretty much um, one way or the other. And I've still figured it out. I've still put in more systems, more pages, more team, more automation, because I got to reach more people in order to make more money. If I want to make more money, I got to reach a hell of a lot more people. Still to this day, 21 years in my business, I got to do more. I don't have to spend more time. Do you get it? I have to reach more people, which means I have to put more things in place so that those people can come in and so that I can nurture them. I got to come up with more fun ways to engage them along the process in that customer journey so that more of them will raise their hand to talk to me or come or buy or come to an event or do something. I have to get more creative in that. You can't just set this stuff and forget it. You have to constantly be improving this whole process, this whole customer journey and the technology and systems that it takes to run it constantly. If you ever want to get anywhere in big money with big relief and big freedom in your life, I'm telling you, it doesn't have to take, it could just be a little guidance along the way for maybe, a, let's reality check it here, maybe a couple of years. Right? I work with people usually from three to seven years. Why? You think, oh, they're not making money. Um, no, they're making money. But it's not all done yet. There's more to do. There's always more to set up. There's always more to tweak. There's always more to add. There's always more to write differently. There's always, you know, the next level to get to. Right. <clears throat> so um, I've really invested a lot of money, just like Colleen, into a lot of mentors and masterminds over the years to the tune of $250,000 or more, most likely. Okay. So if you think you're going to do this on a shoestring, you know, DIY, maybe for $5,000, please go get a job because this is not for you. This is not for you. If you cannot, there's no possible way to learn everything you need to learn about running a smooth running business on $5,000 worth of training. I mean, that's just unrealistic. I mean, I think I spent more of that for college education that didn't even teach me any of this stuff, much less the mentors that I've, that I've learned all this stuff on the streets, in the business, continuously investing in myself, sometimes to the tune of like $100,000 for one program, you guys, okay? And I pulled money out of savings. I pulled it out of 401. I pulled it out of an inheritance. But it's all gotten me to where I am now, which is a continuous multiple six-figure business from here on out, only getting bigger. If you want that, you got to go big or go home, really. So <clears throat> let's talk about preparation, positioning, planning, and productivity in all the things, okay? So we need to make a tweak, right? You can't be doing the same old thinking for the same old results. Um, this is one of my clients who was a fitness trainer in New York City. She would run around New York City doing one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one fitness uh, sessions with people. She would also do classes at gyms, so that was a little bit more leverage, but she wanted a family and kids and wasn't even didn't even have a boyfriend at that time yet, right? But she didn't even have the time to get a boyfriend or even think about having kids because she was doing sessions at the will of her clients. Well, I need it at five o'clock or I need it at 7 p.m. and I need it at 7 a.m. and I need it that. She was running all over town, right? So she had to reimagine. Now, this was uh, probably 10 years ago. So we created the Fit and Healthy Tribe for her. And she started teaching online videos in her home and teaching people that way how to exercise. She would, I was using her from California and she was in New York, 
Okay. So she had clients all over. She still does, which allowed her to free up her time to find a husband and magically have two boys. And now I think they're young teens, <laughs> but I love this picture because it just proves you can get what you want. If you set your mind to it and you think outside the box, or you get some ideas from people who can show you outside their thinking, because sometimes we can only think of this and we need someone else to go, no, there's over here too. There's all this other stuff. Okay. So you have to think about stuff like that. You don't want to be resistant to systems. You just need to learn what and how to do, please. Okay. So we got to get clarity around what you're selling and how you want to design your business's sales processes. Um, I'm not going to go into too much about your business models, but I will tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, that you're probably too cheap. I don't care what you're selling. I, I've kind of, I've seen you land a few times. Lisa, I haven't seen you. Whatever you're thinking of charging, please charge more as much as you can say without stuttering, okay? That's how much I want you to charge, as much as you can say without stuttering. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got the worst cough today. Um, and then you have to make it easier for others to buy, get information and contact you. We were talking about that on your website already. You gotta make it easier. You gotta have click and buy buttons. You gotta have things people want, right? This gal that I was just talking to, not to berate her, like, <laughs> but she was a new client to me. Her opt-in box says, if you want, you know, uh, to get my newsletter, sign up here, right? And I'm like, well, nobody wants a newsletter from you, first of all. And so <clears throat> she wasn't making it easy for people to get on her list. That was all she offered. I'm like, oh my God. And still to this day, you'd think she's been around for a long time in this internet marketing world. She still didn't think to do something different, right? So sometimes we can only think what, it, what we think and we just don't think about anything else. Create your lead gen marketing and follow-up and sales systems. You can't just worry about getting them on the list and then not how you're going to really follow up with them and really get them into more things with you, more conversation, more engagement. One thing I do is I do a, vo I use a voice broadcast system. Now, 21 years ago, when I got a lead, like at a networking event, I came home with like 15 business cards. I would physically call every single person, right? We would email back then too, but I would physically pick up the phone. I still have a landline, y'all. I have, pick, a, pick up the phone and I would call each person separately. <clears throat> These days when I do giveaways and summits, I get like a hundred leads. I can't sit here and call a hundred people, right? So I have a voice broadcast system, which is a technology and it doesn't cost that much. Um, but I could enter all the phone numbers in and leave one voicemail that's really effective. Like, hey, we met at the event yesterday. I just wanted to follow up with you. I'd love to, you can do this without mentioning their name. Do you see? You can say something really personal without mentioning their name, leave them a voicemail. It goes straight to voicemail, this service that I use, which I like. Now, it's only 75% accurate, but it tells you which calls went through, which ones didn't. So you can physically call the other ones if you really want to, right? But hey, getting 75 to go through and not 25 out of 100, that's going to save you a lot of time, right? So, and it's like 10 cents a call. So what's your time worth, right? And so all these, anyways, so yeah, it's called Sly Broadcast, <laughs> Sly, like Sly Fox, S-L-Y broadcast.com. Love the service. Okay, now any new opt-ins that come on our list, some of my um, opt-in boxes have phone number. It's not usually required. Sometimes it is, but whenever someone gives us a phone number, they get on a list. And then once a week, my assistant puts them into Sly Broadcast and sends out the voicemail number one to new subscribers. And then the week later, they send out voicemail number two to new subscribers. Seriously, right? You cannot rely on email only. You can send voicemails to these people and emails. <clears throat> and then if you have little uh, postcards or note cards created uh, that ha that somebody else, like you could, I just created a whole bunch of note cards. I don't have anybody currently doing this. I need someone to. Something you outsource could be the follow-up by mail. Something that um, I don't have my the really fun new ones that I created. But this one is fun because it has um, pre-written stuff in it with my picture. And then my assistant was signing my name. And I, even on some of them, I would say like, hey, great, great meeting you at the event this week, right? She would just do a general, great meeting you at the event this week, especially if I met somebody in person at an event and I have a list of 50 people with addresses. She would do that same message, put it in an envelope and mail it off. And so these would actually be delivered to her house. She would buy stamps. And so I would, I would create these on Canva or Vistaprint or whatever. 
and send them to the assistant. <clears throat> she signs them and sends them new subscribers. She's also sending out the voicemails. Guess what? Somebody can also send out the follow-up emails because if you pre-write them, all they have to change is, hey, I met them at the Leap event. Hey, I met you at the eWomen event. Hey, I met you at the Polkadot event. You can just change where you met them, say similar stuff in the email, and somebody else can send the email for you. So the follow-up system is probably your most important thing that you really create these templates for, these systems for, because when they don't get followed up, they get cold, right? And they forget about you. If you don't follow up for 30 days, oh, you remember to follow up 30 days later. But if you leave it all on your plate to follow up, you're not gonna follow up with every single person person that you meet individually by email, individually by phone, individually by private message on Facebook, individually on LinkedIn, individually in the mail. You, I mean, are you gonna do that? No, I don't know. I'm not gonna do that. I don't have time for that especially if I need to reach a hundred to people a week, at least to get into my funnel, I got to go out and get more leads and the system needs to be following up with them. Do you see? So you got to set up the really good system that is very personal with videos along the way, touches like uh, voicemails and mail because their direct mail gets opened, y'all. Emails don't always get opened. A lot of times emails go into spam. So go back to the basics, I'm telling you, and do direct mail and phone. And you will probably see skyrocket more of success, okay? So <clears throat> I don't think I'm gonna be able to get through everything here because I have so much. So, and then get clarity um, around what you're selling again. So we're talking... Uh, Product funnel. So what are you selling? Uh, again, I don't know that I have time to go into all of this, but let's have a variety. Let's have a variety of offerings to hit a variety of price points, please, and a variety of learning styles. So some people want to be with you in person in an event. Some people want to, or on Zoom. Some people want one-on-one. -on -one. Some people want to learn by reading stuff. Some people want to learn by watching videos. Some people want to learn by um, interacting or you doing it with them. I don't know. Have a variety. Also, please have a high end. Please have something at five thousand or ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars, and also have a try me out at three hundred or five hundred dollars. Okay, if you're able, if you're a coach or consultant, easy peasy. It's just it requires confidence. <laughs> it requires confidence to charge more, which you can. But guess what? You can have a ten thousand dollar program, even if you're not sure someone might buy it yet. Please say you have one. Please put it on your website because it'll start giving you more confidence to start talking about it. And guess what? One day someone will say, okay, I'll buy that. And you'll be like, oh, shit, <laughs> right? So if you don't have one, you won't sell one. So have the different price points, please. Okay, we're not gonna go into the freebie development ideas or the easy yes offers. Well, easy yes offers are things that people will buy. Like hopefully my offer is an easy yes offer for you today because normally I charge $1,500 it's about $1,000 an hour when you look at the packages that I sell, right? But I love to do a try me out thing for 350 bucks. And that's a 90 minute call. Now I used to do, uh, uh, well, way long ago, I was like $59 an hour. That was my starting rate when I first started my business, right? But you gotta grow your confidence. You gotta grow your worth. You gotta grow, 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 grow. <clears throat> 21 years later, now it's where it's at. But I know people that were giving away their genius in that first call or they do a free consult and they coach somebody, right? Don't do that, right? If you're, you're subject to solving people's problems in a first time call, then please charge for that call, okay? I don't care if it's 50 bucks or a hundred bucks, anything under $200 though is kind of an easy yes. Now I'm breaking my easy rest rule because I'm charging 350 for my special thing but I know a lot about a lot and I know it's gonna be worth it, right? So, but four hours for a hundred bucks. I, that's how I hired my current bookkeeper as I met her at a networking event. I knew she did bookkeeping, but she made an offer. I'm gonna do four hours for a hundred bucks if someone wants to try us out for bookkeeping. I'm like, sold, I wrote her a check. I wrote her a check. You know how long this was, right? I wrote her a check on the spot. I gave it to her and I next passed off all my stuff. And do I wanna pass that off to anybody else or take it back? No, hell no. I've been working with her ever since. Okay, because she made an easy yes offer at a networking event for four hours for a hundred bucks. Now she charges me $225 a month to do my bookkeeping, 
which I don't know if that's more good or bad, but she does a lot of work for me and does my taxes pretty cheap too for the end. So, I mean, it's a good deal for what I need. <clears throat> the point is she's made a lot of money off that easy yes offer, right? It gets people in the door. So think about what you can do as an easy yes offer. It's not a regular price. It's a try you out kind of thing, all right? Back to the techie stuff, right? So delivering content and online instruction. A lot of people want to create courses and online programs and things like that. And that's okay, but make sure your people want to buy that. I have programs a lot and people don't necessarily want to buy that. People would rather fly across the country and come to a three-day mastermind with me than to do an online training for 200 bucks for three hours. I don't understand it, but my people are my people. So figure out what your people want and give them that. Don't just create a course because everybody on the internet says you have to have a course, okay? So that's that. Um, <clears throat> Enjoying consistent, efficient, smooth running business, making it easier. Please have really easy opt-in boxes like this. Have buy now buttons, big bonuses, all right? This is too confusing to probably read on the slide, but uh, it's kind of like the process you take. You could take a picture of it if you want. I saw you taking pictures, Lisa, but it's, it's I created this as, it's kind of overwhelming, but when the website is the hub of your business, these are the things you can do with them when they opt in or buy something. So one, the yellow is when they opt in for a freebie, all the things you could potentially do with them. And the orange is for when they buy all the things you could potentially do with them. Okay. So if you're not thinking about all these little steps, you're missing things. You're missing opportunities to buy and sell and do upsells and all kinds of things. So I explained this in person, but it's, it was just a thing. Uh, we've already talked about the Legion. I don't think you need to know any more testimonials. Um, what to delegate. Here's a what to delegate slide you might take a picture of. Um, we talked about follow-up marketing and how to delegate some of those things. There's more to it than that because we got to get into exactly what to say. What's the process of follow-up? Um, I do have a great follow-up flow chart and a follow-up email if you guys want to get it. Um, Oh, you love mind maps. I'm just looking at the chat. <laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> oh, is that cheap for bookkeepers, Colleen? I was just looking at your comment. Is that cheap? Uh, yeah. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> give me her name because I want to talk to her. Okay. Good. Well, she's in California. So I don't know. Anyways, um, what to delegate. <clears throat> so my follow-up, it's a freebie. So example of a freebie. You can go get it if you want to. It's jumpstartyourfollowup.com. If you go to jumpstartyourfollowup.com, you can get the follow-up flowchart and the follow-up. It's a, like a one-hour training on follow-up marketing that's really detailed. That's one of the best things to start delegating or get in place first. Um, and then you can turn on the marketing hose because when you have the systems for attaining new leads and clients and you're following up with them masterfully, then you can turn on the marketing hose and bring more people in. But please don't turn on the marketing hose and bring more people in until you have really good follow-up systems and people are actually engaging because you'll just have a broken system, okay? You might have people on your email list, but if you're not doing the basics to follow up with them and do regular consistent email marketing, phone and mail, then you're not going to be maximizing all the work you're doing in the initial lead gen process. Um, bookkeeping and accounting is always good. <laughs> Funny story. My first nine months in business, <clears throat> I came to tax season and it was like, crap, I haven't done any bookkeeping. I don't know anything about bookkeeping. I called my mom because I knew she worked in that before in her previous job. Can you come help me please and do my bookkeeping? bang so I can do my taxes? And she did. She came in. And then when she was done, she's like, okay, now you need to hire a bookkeeper because I'm not coming back to do this ever again. <laughs> and I was like, the best lesson ever learned, but she did it for me. And then she told me, and I've had a bookkeeper ever since. Now, if you're not making a lot of money, there's not a lot of books to make. So go make money first with your sales and your follow-up and your marketing. And then hopefully within nine months, it's I say hopefully, because it's a good thing to need a bookkeeper because you have so much in the back end, all your receipts and everything that you need someone to manage it for your taxes. I highly recommend someone does your taxes too when you have your own business because you don't know all the loopholes to get out of paying taxes. I think the first eight or nine years, I didn't pay any taxes. I got returns, okay? Now I have huge tax bills, which I don't like, but they're not as huge as they could be because she's still 
finagling things make me look good on paper, right? So get someone to do that. Please don't try to figure that out when you're an entrepreneur. Oh my God. All right. <laughs> Graphic and web design. I know Canva is amazing, but I have seen people do stuff on Canva and it looks like dog poop because they don't know what they're doing with layout. Okay. So I come from the advertising world and I used to actually lay the stuff out. So I'm pretty, you know, good. So if you're not good, there's inexpensive people that can do better graphics and you definitely don't hire out your website. Um, social media or social networking. Um, you might be able to do some basic posting. Yes, but you're going to want to be there engaging and building relationships and going into groups to personally do stuff within groups. So there are strategic things like I, it's more important if you hang out inside groups like Leap, where you're really engaging with the members, you'll get more out of it than if you just post stuff randomly on your page and profile. I mean, that's just kind of like a waste of time these days, unless you're doing the other things. Um, blogging, copywriting, repurposing. Oops, I went back. Next. Uh, research for speaking, publicity, organizing, filing errands, all this stuff you could be delegating. So you don't have to do it all at once, but slowly but surely you start building your team. So what can you guys tweak for a more consistent, smooth running, money-making business? Um, here's some stuff for your website. You can do opt-in boxes, add some different opt-in boxes, a couple different freebies, um, add a form on your contact page or a free consult form. You can have better offerings laid out on your website. You can put more photos on your website of you. You can put more videos on your website of you, please. Uh, you can put a speaker page up if you don't have one and you're a speaker. You can put more testimonials. You can add more hidden pages and thank you pages. These are the things that will move the needle if you could just do some of this. So some of you don't have a lot of this going on. You might start with these things first on your website, right? And then and creating new freebies. And then it's marketing the freebies. And then it's creating those follow-up to the freebies, right? We drop members every Monday in the newsletter. Okay. Jumpstart your follow-up. Okay. Um... Maximize your online presence. Notice that I have all my online social. Now, these are old images, but I had the same headshot in all of them. Notice, okay, some people have their dog on Facebook and their, and their headshot on LinkedIn and something different on Instagram, but these are very noticeable, right? And they all are Katrina Sawa. So sometimes we started them early on, but almost everything you'll see is Katrina Sawa, Katrina Sawa, Katrina Sawa on my social media. Right. It's not my business. My business name has changed. It used to be Kesawa Marketing, then Kesawa Consulting, and then uh, Jumpstart Your uh, Marketing for a long time. I was Jumpstart Your Marketing, and then and now it's Jumpstart Your Biz. And then it went back to Katrina Sawa, and then it came back to Jumpstart Your. I mean, like, be careful where you're <laughs> branding yourself. Brand you, you know, unless you have a really hard to spell name. Um, what you may need to set up. So this could be something you take a picture of. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of a list of techy stuff. Uh, a lot of times people don't realize that they have a YouTube channel, but if you have a Gmail or a Google calendar, you have a YouTube, it just may not have anything on it. Um, you know, the, the slide broadcast thing, the phone systems, chat GPT is big, but don't use chat GPT unless you really know how to use it and how to utilize it. It's just going to be a, a squirrel. It's going to be a rabbit hole that you go down, right? I, I haven't needed it up to here. I've done fine. You do have to learn how to write better stuff though, write better content, write better sales pages, write better emails. So you might want to learn about copywriting or sales writing or marketing writing, if you're not good at that, to go with some of this techie stuff. Because if you're not good at that, then it may the techie stuff you set up may not actually work very well, right? So it kind of, it all has to kind of flow hand in hand, flow together. <clears throat> and I'm watching the time. Okay. And want the fast track? You can join me. I can help you. Here's a package for 350 bucks. You get a 90 minute one-on-one -on -one with me uh, to talk about any of this. And you can get a delegating ebook and checklist. And you get both of my two books that are my best books. I already told you where to get the follow-up flow chart and audio training. And it's 1600 value for 350 bucks. And uh, yeah. Um, so I will go find that link. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, drop the link. Cause I've been I... dropping all of this in, um, 
in uh, Facebook as well. So I wrote, you were talking about meeting all the members within the Leap community. And that's why I said every, every single Monday in our newsletter, we spotlight a new member the week before. And so we drop their information for you to book a one-on-one -on -one with them. So one of the best ways to meet besides coming to the events and doing networking and speed networking is doing a one-on-one -on -one with them, right? That's how you're going to let them know what you do, that you, they can tell you what they do. Um, and next Thursday is Pam Wilson. She'll be talking about talking about whole brain thinking and using, utilizing writing along with the whole brain thinking. So that link is here for anyone who wants to attend next Thursday. And then Katrina, once you drop that link, thank you. Then I will put that on Facebook as well. And then let me go ahead and stop our live and stop recording.